does seem like I don't know how you think from 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 the start of the tournament that that the referees and the, and the TMOs and the bunker have improved um, their manner of explaining um, decisions to the to the public watching on television. I think on the on that first weekend, as it was a new thing, it's still a trial technically. Um, it was a little bit higgledy piggledy, wasn't it? Whereas I think now you hear the TMO saying to the referee, you're now on screen, you can explain your decision. It's a little bit more down the cricket route. Is that something that you've noticed as well? And is, is that what you're sort of getting at, the, the, the clarity almost? Yeah, and I think that's that's point one. They need they needed to um, take some time and absorb how to do things efficiently and correctly on pitch. And you can see there is, a, there is an evolution of how they're doing that. They are bringing more clarity. They're using a certain set of words and guidelines that people can follow more readily. But where, where, they're, where it's probably been uh, confusing for people is they're seeing uh, incidents that they feel are the same. Now, the best way I can describe this is it's a bit like snowflakes. They all look the same till you really, really examine them. Then each one is so uniquely different. You can have, of course, different outcomes. So are the referees and the TMOs and the, as they're called, the FPRO bunker people who are sitting in Roland Garris, going uh, going through it in a better format yes they are and if you you feel that as people watching that well that's the outcome that's how you know they're doing better so there's that bit of it but there's probably more sides to it going along than that do you think do you think that the bunker therefore has brought uh, speaking at present day do you think that the bunker has been more positive than negative on the tournament so far well that's that's one to really throw back to you and that's not to double negative that's not to not answer the question the, the, the people who need to answer that question are the people viewing and the people watching and consuming the sports. But um, what it's done is sped up. The, so what has it done? Well, it has sped up those foul play. So you're not getting 10, 20 replays of a referee standing there while someone's constantly being hit in the head as they're trying to work out the correct answer under huge pressure, not only of the 20 to 85,000 people in the stadium, not only to the um, the wider audience, but now a global audience. So, yes, it's removed that huge frustration. But by putting things on, you know, in rugby league terms, on report and sending it to the bunker, the FPRO, the foul play officer, I think what has happened is now we're watching this little uh, icon on the screen, which is red or yellow, and wondering what it's coming back. Now, the fear is when it becomes more partisan in the crunch games, whatever you as a supporter feel those crunch games are, that could be the, the Argentina-Japan game or it could be Scotland-Ireland this weekend. We're hoping that it goes our way of whatever way you're supporting rather than what the incident deserves. So, yes, the bunker is, is providing a brilliant clarity for referees and what they need to do to speed up the game, to take the pressure off, to make things less draconian for them. But it's also created other ripple effects, and that's to be expected. That's not a, a purge on the system. That's just what's happened. JP, are we, are we going to see a direct red that doesn't go to the bunker, and is it all right if we don't? I, I would say it's highly unlikely. I think you've seen some that were fairly clearly toward that line, and we would all, I would say, if you lined all the guys up in the room there, they around your table there, they would agree that that was red. You know it's coming back as red, and it comes back as red, and that's okay. So, no, we don't have to have one, but I, I, I do feel it, 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 and I don't believe it has been removed from the referees. I'm, I'm very certain of that. They do have the power. But the, 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 the incidents we, or the, the, the reasons I listed earlier around pressure, that's removed for them. So you, you can totally understand, and we can support why they wouldn't do that. Take us behind the curtain a little bit during a tournament. Do, do decisions get, dis, clearly decisions get stuck? get discussed by the body of officials that are working at, at said tournament do they do does it therefore evolve and do we does what are, becomes a red does red hold threshold red card threshold sorry change over the over the course of this tournament as as officials discuss certain incidents so what's the best way of saying it? the clearest reds won't change they'll be reds and the clearest yellows will stay yellow so you're going to talk about the subjective bit, the bit that my team says it's red and your team says it's yellow. It's the debatable. When we talk about facts in rugby, there's very few facts apart from I freeze the tape and you're standing onside or offside. And we've seen in VAR how difficult that is, you know, to even get that, which is a um, an objective fact, correct. The subjective facts around did he do this, did he do that, what was the force, 
who initiated it, was it passive, was it aggressive? All these things are subjected to how you are viewing it at the time and angles and camera angles. So will the yellows get dissected? That yellow could be red and red could be yellow and there will be a flow around the tournament, of course. But you would expect that even if it was a schools tournament that you're all hanging out and chatting, what you would give around the breakdown in that tournament will evolve with the teams. This will too. And you will see the best referees, and I don't think I'll be speaking out of turn to say you're Wayne Barnes, you're Yako Piper, you're Ben O'Keefe's. You see them having a greater um, malleability in their hands to spot the moments and deal with them correctly. And that's what seniority and, and class of performance gives you. And look, we all love to hate the referees. And I'm sure those three refs I listed will have plenty of naysayers out there, but they have plenty, way more people who back their wonderful abilities on the pitch. And I think that's where we are with that. So a bit long-winded, but I hope that answers it. JP, who's getting the final? One of those three you mentioned? Well, nationality is always a, a, a big thing. So, you know, if, if, if New Zealand get there, well, Ben O'Keefe won't do it, and South Africa or England. So you're looking at those three referees. You're also, it's a subjective choice of the, um, the people who hold the decisions. So it could go outside of those three, but you would, you would strongly suggest Wayne Barnes in his fifth World Cup from 2007s to now would be the the class of the field and has shown that and has refereed that way for many big games and has annoyed probably every nation along the way because he, he's done so many big games you can't keep everybody happy all the time but people believe he's class and what's really interesting is as he referees people in general will believe what he says as fact because they know he's got the game's interest in heart other referees who don't referee in that style they irk people much quicker. Maybe I was one of those, but you irk people much quicker because you don't show the class that the top guys do. And that goes from your Per Luigi Colinas down through your, um, uh, I was going to say, Mark, yeah, let's say Howard Webb, all the way through to your Wayne Barnes. And I think that's that's what gives people confidence in refereeing. JP, um, just you said that comparing incidents is sometimes a bit a bit futile, but I just want a more sort of philosophical point. Um, in, in that England Argentina game where we saw Tom Curry, Tom Curry red carded, um, do you think that the lawmakers and that rugby's got it right, whereby that is a red card, an, an accidental mistimed tackle, whereas the recklessness of Santiago Carreras in charging down that followed um, was only yellow carded? I'm not saying that the officials got it wrong. I'm, I'm sure they got it right, and it was by the book. But do you think that philosophically the laws are in the right place, whereby intent is just completely ignored? Um. Well, you say intent's completely ignored, but if I ball up my fist and throw 10 haymakers and miss every single one, the intent to punch yeah. you in the head 10 times will be taken into account. Of course, intent is there. People say, well, it's not part of it. If if I was, right, if I give you an example, if I'm at a rook and I'm going through the rook and my foot happens to hit someone's knee joint or their neck or whatever, but I had no idea and someone pushed me, that's not a, that's not foul play. If I look at someone and then stand on them, that intent is taken into sorry, account. Talking intent more in the tackle area, JP, sorry, in, in terms of the tackle. So, yeah, and that's why I'm saying what those two incidents, they were looked at for their own unique purpose. They weren't linked as in Carreras is jumping and potentially injuring Ford or Tom Curry is coming in and the, and the fullback is coming out of the air down into him. They were looked at on their own instance. Now, I think they were probably both marginal one way or the other. And sometimes in sport, we have to accept that, that the marginality of calls does happen. And I think there was probably a greater prevalence of people in public who said, well, Carreras deliberately did that in their opinion. And Curry was just trying to do the right thing. But if you look at, you talk about doing the right thing, just beside him was Eli in a bent over uh, position, bent at the hips, making a legal tackle. So it could be done. It was Curry's fault. And he had to plead guilty to get his two games. He was banned because the incident happened, not because of the severity of the incident. And just the TMO more generally, do you think that rugby's got the balance right at the minute in in extending the powers of the TMO and introducing this bunker when we've had very high profile incidents in football this weekend where now there have been calls to abolish VAR completely. Um, Premiership Rugby Cup's currently taking place in England without any TMO at all and the feedback from fans and coaches is just very positive and it's, it's, it's much quicker and they're sort of saying uh, we, 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 can, we can deal with bad decisions better now 
um, because we, we're going to get them anyway. We get them even with a TMO. Human error is impossible yeah. to, to to eliminate in um, even with the TMO. What, so what, what's your take on that? Yeah, so yeah, double-sided court. The value of the decision is the most important thing. So in the Premiership Club, with the greatest due respect to it, the teams are happy just to play and the outcome and the winning and the losing is not of the same value as the Premiership final nor is it the same value as a World Cup quarter semi. When we have to get, people will say, we have to get these big decisions right. And that's what drives needing to have a TMO. The need to make the decisions right for the referee to make things right has brought in first assistants, ARs, and now has brought in TMO, and now has brought in an even further development of an FPRO, the, the, the bunker. So we're layering these things because on the pressure applied by coaches to get absolutely everything right. You're seeing higher penalty counts. And the, the fear we have is when we're watching the game. So there were seven incidents this weekend uh, from Thursday with the, uh, the red card for Lamb all the way to um, uh, uh, Karevi's um, arm out uh, in the Australia game. There were seven incidents. And even the Paulus tackle being the last incident, seven incidents across the weekend. People are, all those incidents were missed live. Every single one of them. If that was a normal game, not one of them would have been seen. And the, 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 the bunker and the TMO are coming to the referee to stop the game. And that's what's causing frustration. We do need to see we're getting more of these live. Because when you feel the referee is driving, um, you know, always driving the bus, when you feel that the referee is driving the bus, we feel in a better way about it. We feel confidence in them. Go back to what we said about Wayne Barnes earlier. So it, it is about the best will always do better. I understand what we're saying about the Premiership Cup. It's beautiful refereeing when you don't have a TMO because you become infallible again. People believe in you. And there's a there's a thing out there, Black Blocks thinking, you know, the doctors versus um, the airline industry, which should you be? And the TMO has exasperated that with us. So and I've sort of given you loads of different examples along there. Probably complicated the simple for you. But that's the job. It's a really complicated job. But please don't feel sorry for us or for them. It's a very brilliant job, which is well rewarded. We love it. We get great trips. And it's a wonderful thing to be involved in the World Cup.